So who is this Academy that Oscar winners are always thanking? Thank you to the Academy. To the Academy. To the Academy. To the Academy. The Academy. How are those winners chosen? What's the difference between the Oscars and the Academy Awards? And why do I have a burst capillary in my eye? Well, I don't really know what happened to my eye there, but I can tell you that the Academy stands for the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. It's sort of the National Honor Society of the movie industry. Or maybe a better comparison would be to say that it is the Illuminati of the film industry. Since it includes all of the most powerful people people in Hollywood, the identities of his 6,000 members are kept secret, and to become a member you either have to be recommended by two current members, be nominated for an Oscar, or be an old white guy. To be eligible for an Oscar, a movie must be released between January and December of the previous calendar year, and it has to have played for at least seven consecutive days in a movie theater in Los Angeles County. That's why, for example, The Revenant was released on Christmas Day, but actually it was only playing in four, yes, four theaters total for the next two weeks until January 8th, when Leo started climbing into horse carcasses at theaters nationwide. Wide. This was so that The Revenant didn't have to compete at the box office with all the other movie releases on Christmas Day, but Leo would also be eligible to be nominated for another Oscar that he probably won't win. So the 6,000 members of the Academy choose the Oscar winners through two stages of voting. First are the nominations, during which Academy members can only vote for categories related to their professional affiliation. So for example, directors vote for best director, costume designers vote for best costume design, and people who understand the difference between sound editing and sound mixing vote for those categories. But everyone gets to vote for the best picture now. Nominee. And maybe you've noticed that from year to year, the total number of Best Picture nominees tends to change. And the reason for that is because the Best Picture nominees are chosen based on a system of ranking that is arguably more complicated than the Presidential Caucus system, in which between 5 and 10 movies can be nominated in a given year, depending on how many of them cross a certain threshold of the percentage of the total number of votes. The formulas are so complex that the Academy actually has an accounting firm do the calculations for them. That's right, in the last week, this guy was counting votes at a caucus in the race for President of the United States, and these guys were counting votes for things like best sound mixing in a movie. In the second and final round of voting, Academy members rank each of the nominees in all 24 different categories. And that adds up to quite a bit of movies. And while Academy members are instructed not to vote for things if they haven't seen the movies, it's a poorly kept secret that many of them do vote for movies that they've never even seen. Which is why studios actually run Oscar campaigns to persuade undecided voters to vote for their movies through advertisements and events. It is once again much like the presidential race except much more professional. Anyway, the reason studios are willing to spend money on these campaigns is because movies that win an Oscar, especially Best Picture winners, tend to see a spike in revenue. In the case of Best Pictures, typically it's $14 million extra. Oscar is actually the name of the golden trophy given out at the Academy Awards, but the Oscars has become a sort of nickname for the TV broadcast officially known as the Academy Awards. So it would be kind of like if the major award won by the father in a Christmas story was officially called the Major Awards, but it was nicknamed the Leg Lamps. Now the first Academy Awards took place in the year 1929, but the statue didn't receive the name the Oscar until about 10 years later. Supposedly the name came from an Academy librarian who said the statue looked a lot like her uncle Oscar. Really? Are you related to an Art Deco era chess piece made of solid gold? So what happens to these Oscars after stars win them? Well, in order to prevent aging movie stars from selling off their Oscars the way that retired football players sell their Super Bowl rings, if you want to take your trophy home with you after winning it at the Oscars, they actually make you sign a legal document saying that you or your heirs will never sell the trophy. The Academy has actually taken many people to court and won legal injunctions preventing the descendants of Oscar winners from selling the statue later on. Although you are allowed to sell it back to the Academy, and I'm not making this up, it's in the contract, for $10. Yes, this policy has been affirmed in a court of law, which just proves that the Illuminati, I mean the Academy, not only controls Hollywood, it also controls our legal system. All right, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for commenting. And we should hang out sometime. Hey.